Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. Uh, today we have a very interesting saint. Interesting in a sort of um, sad way. We're honoring today William Tinsdale. In um, on this date, October sixth, in fifteen thirty six, he was in Brussels. Uh, strangled at the stake, and his body was burned. And you might ask yourself, if you don't already know, what his great crime was. Well, his crime was that he translated the Bible into English, at least a good chunk of it. He had um, he had been determined since a young person to um, translate the Bible. He was born in. Um, uh, 1495 and died as I said in uh, 1536 so he wasn't a particularly old person when that happened but he had devoted his life to um, English to putting the Bible into English he was well educated of course and um, but he um, left for Germany in 1524 because he knew that he would never get support in England for uh, translating the Bible. And um, as it says in the um, Lesser Peace and Fast, from this time um, on, his life le reads like a cloak and dagger story as King Henry VIII, Cardinal Wolsey and others sought to destroy his work of translation and put him to death. As soon as he got um, into Germany, he had to travel for the rest of his life from city to city, never lighting in any one place for long because of Henry's agents um, constantly looking for him. He lived a life of poverty, persecution, and danger. He was a man of um, passion, and his passion was to translate the Bible. He said at one point to a prominent churchman, if God spare my life, ere many years I will cause a boy that driveth the plow shall know more scripture than thou dost. His accomplished work is his glory. Before his betrayal and death, he had finished and revised the translation of the entire New Testament and had completed the Pentateuch and Jonah and um, the historical books from Joshua to the Second Chronicles. Some 80% of his version has survived in the language of later and more familiar trans versions, such as the King James Version. And in fact, it's said that every English version from um, that time on onward is just a revision of his work. Now, as I said, he didn't quite finish the Old Testament. A man named Miles Coverdale um, did finish it. And um, there was published a Bible called the, um, the Tyndale Coverdale Bible. Tyndale was um, essentially assassinated through a long and horrible process, but assassinated in 1536. By 1537, Henry had changed his mind and had authorized an English version. And they called it the Matthew Bible because they were too embarrassed having just barely um, had this man put to death um, to call it the, the Coverdale, uh, the Tinsdale Coverdale Bible. So it was called the Matthew Bible. So we owe a great deal to um, Math, uh, sorry, uh, William Tinsdale, and today we honor him. Now, let us begin. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And this being Friday, we will confess our sins against God and our neighbor. On page 79. Most merciful God, we confess we that we, confess have, sinned that we have sinned against you. Thought, thought, word, deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Turning to page 82, let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Today's psalm is 102, found on page 731. We will say it together responsibly by whole verse. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me when I call. Make haste to answer me. For my days drift away like smoke, and my bones are hot as burning coals. My heart is smitten like grass and withered, so that I forget to eat my bread. Because of the voice of my groaning, I am but skin and bones. I have become like a vulture in the wilderness, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake and groan. I am like a sparrow, lonely on a housetop. My enemies revile me all day long, and those who scoff at me have taken an oath against me. For I have eaten ashes for bread and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of your indignation and wrath, you have lifted me up and thrown me away. My days pass away like a shadow, and I wither like the grass. But you, O Lord, endure forever, in your name from age to age. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it's time to have mercy upon her. Indeed, the appointed time has come. For your servants love her very rubble, and are moved to pity even for her dust. The nations shall fear your name, O Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build on Zion, and his glory will appear. He will look with favor on the prayer of the homeless. He will not despise their plea. Let this be written for a future generation, so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord. For the Lord looked down from his holy place on high. From the heavens he beheld the earth that he might hear the groan of the captive and set free those condemned to die. That they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together and the kingdom also to serve the Lord. He has brought down my strength before my time. He has shortened the number of my days. And I said, O oh my God, do not take me away in the midst of my days. Your years endure throughout all generations. In the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They shall perish, but you will endure. They all shall wear out like a garment. As clothing, you will change them, and they shall be changed. But you are always the same, and your years will never end. The children of your servant shall continue and their offspring shall stand fast in your sight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson. A reading from the second um, book of Kings. When King Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, who is in charge of the palace, and Shebna, the secretary, and the senior priests, covered with sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. They said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, This is a day of distress and of rebuke and of disgrace. Children have come to the birth, and there is no strength to bring them forth. It may be that the Lord your God heard all the words of the Rabshakeh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to mock the living God, and will rebuke the words that the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. When the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Say to your master, Thus says the Lord, do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled me. I myself will put a spirit in him, so that he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land. I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Then Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria fighting against Libna, for he had heard that the king had left Lachish. When the king heard concerning King Tarhaka of Ethiopia, see, he has set out to fight against you. He sent messengers again to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to King Hezekiah of Judah. Do not let your God on whom you rely deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. See, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands, destroying them utterly. Shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them? The nations that my predecessors destroyed? Gozan, Haran, Rezef, and the people of Eden who were in Telassar. Where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, the king of the city of Sepharvaim, the king of Hena, or the king of Iva? Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Then Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, the God of Israel, who are enthroned above the cherubim, you are God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands, and have hurled their gods into the fire, though they were no gods but the work of human hands, wood and stone, and so they were destroyed. So now, O Lord our God, save us, I pray you, from his hand so that all the kingdoms, the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, O Lord, are God alone. Then Isaiah, son of Amoz, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I have heard your prayer to me about King Sennacherib of Assyria. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. Turning to page 86, let us say together canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race, the runners all compete, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win it. Athletes exercise self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. So I do not run aimlessly, nor do I box as though beating the air, but I punish my body and enslave it, so that after proclaiming to others, I myself should not be disqualified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. Turning to page 93, let us say together canticle 18, a song to the land. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. The third lesson. A reading from the gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, Great crowds followed him, and there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priests, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly, I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west. And will eat with Abraham and as Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. 
When Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and began to serve him. That evening, they brought to him many who were possessed with demons and he cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let us turn to page 96 and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you planted in the heart of your servant, William Tinsdale, a consuming passion, passion to bring the scriptures to people in their native language and endowed him with the spirit, the gift of powerful and graceful expression and with strength to persevere against all obstacles. Reveal to us your saving word as we read and study the scriptures and hear them calling to us for repentance and life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you spent, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. And now, as we prepare ourselves to bring our prayers before God, I invite you to add your own. We pray this day for the church, for our Anglican Communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Alaska within the Episcopal Church, 
for our entire Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the congregation of the Church of Our Father in House Cove, and for those who advocate for the poor and the oppressed, and for the many and for the main Episcopal Public Policy Network. And we pray for our own parish of St. John's, for our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed. We pray for the soul family, Barbara, JB, John, and Michaela. We offer continued prayers for Bob, Evie, the Zenk family, Ozzy, Judy, Fred, Sarah, Ross, Jenny, Marlene, James, and Piong. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erling, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples and places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine. We pray for all suffering effects of natural, of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to cooperate with God's earth in mitigating the climate crisis. We pray for our enemies and for those who wish us harm, and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to first love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our, for our nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Rick, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel. We pray for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. And we offer prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week, including Tobena, and Emma, and we pray for the departed, for Bill Soule, Martha Sue, and John Ferrara, for victims of the war in Ukraine, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now turning to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
This brings us to the end of our service for the, both the day and the week. As always, we are happy and grateful that you've been able to be with us and hope that you'll again be able to join us soon, perhaps Monday. Um, I mentioned that um, Henry had had his agents looking for William Tyndale um, throughout Europe, um, always on his tail, um, and that's why he had to move about so much. But it was actually someone he trusted that betrayed him. So um, with that thought in mind, let us all ourselves in a, um, honor William this day by perhaps reading a bit of scripture for ourselves. And with that, and we all know the presence of God in our lives this day and find ways of uh, reflecting that presence out into a needy and hurting world. Again, thank you for being with us. May God bless us all this day, this weekend, and forever. See you soon.